Aid volunteers from the United States join local volunteers in Mexico to assess damages after massive earthquake. We meet an amazing teacher who inspires and encourages his students despite being disabled himself. Welcome to Die Headlines, I'm Siri Su, thank you for joining us. In the aftermath of the strong earthquake that struck Mexico, city volunteers from the United States have traveled to Mexico to work with local volunteers and assess the damages. Here's our report. There's a massive destruction. About 500 families' houses are destroyed, or 60 to 70 percent damaged. There are three ways to identify the damaged houses, with the labels of yellow, green, and red dots. The houses with the red dots have fallen. We need basic necessities such as oil, rice, or beans. The children here don't have milk or diapers. How many buildings here destroyed? Uh, you know? It's old street. Yeah, I hear about school. School, I, huh? Yeah. Is the school destroyed? Yeah, some, yeah. some school are destroyed here. This area is residential. In front of this area is the commercial area, and residential areas in the back. Now the residential area has been impacted. People cannot live here. Therefore, they have been staying at the shelters. This city is very old, as it was built in 1840. This is the biggest earthquake in more than 200 years. You can see the structure of the houses is very weak, so they collapsed easily. There's only sand and no cement. That's why they cannot adhere and the houses easily collapse. You can see that my house in the back collapsed. It fell on my knees, but she is doing okay. My niece has a broken spine and my nephew's arm was amputated, thanks to the neighbors who managed to get them out. And I tried to uh, get, um, get help, you know, hopefully try to help you rebuild, you know. No school. No. The 102-year-old school collapsed. About 800 students study here. I'm waiting for the cars from other places to receive help. There is no work, no income, and you have to worry about how to find food. I'm here to help, to help my people, and uh, I try to make a change, to, to show my kids there is another way uh, to share, to, to help. Well, I stay here to, to give him uh, food, to give water uh, all the week and if I can, all the month until I, I can help. Since it has been a month after Hurricane Harvey struck Houston, city's disaster relief work in the most affected areas has come to an end. Recently, the volunteers returned to Tsuji, Texas chapter to hold a small-scale aid distribution for the nearby hurricane victims. Stretching out her hands for this city volunteer to hold tightly, He Xiaochui told the volunteer the pain and suffering she had experienced over the past month. I still feel sad, but since I still have my job, I'm still alive, I think I'm fortunate already. I have not only received the love from city volunteers, but I have also obtained the strength from different parts of the world. So no matter what happened, we can eventually overcome the difficulties. Instead of giving up, we should work hard. One month after Hurricane Harvey tore through the United States, city volunteers have returned from severely impacted areas to city Texas chapter. They host the relief distribution at the Jin Si Ho for two days for the nearby affected residents. 
We really want to help more people, so that's why we have set up a distribution station in this office. We don't want to lose any chance to help the nearby residents. Suffering from losses, the affected residents lean on the volunteers' shoulders to vent out their emotions. The volunteers deliver gifts in bamboo coin banks as a blessing to the hurricane victims. I feel very happy today because I have received love from many people. I'll pass on this love to other people. When someone is suffering, everybody should come all the way to help the needy. I should spread a spirit of great love. The promise of this residence boosts city volunteers' confidence. In the future, the volunteers will continue to bring love and care to this community. As we mentioned, it has been a month after Hurricane Harvey hit the United States. In the aftermath of the disaster, Tsuji delivered disaster relief. Each disaster area was allocated with one CEO to take care of the relief work. From disaster assessments to aid distributions, the volunteers are always there. The rainfall at that time was much heavier than the present one and had rained for 10 continuous hours. After the volunteers returned from their home visitations, it suddenly began to rain heavily, reminding everyone of the day when Hurricane Harvey made landfall. From the moment the disaster came, Tzu immediately mobilized volunteers to help with relief work. But this time the cooperation mode between Tzu and local Red Cross is different than before. The areas nearby Houston were severely flooded by the disaster. According to the current estimate, over 500,000 households suffer from losses. The local Red Cross will provide emergency shelters in the first two weeks. Then they will provide victims with hot meals. Later, they will start to search and rescue victims. So their steps for conducting disaster assessments cannot provide timely assistance, which is not what we want. As for how to get the list of hurricane victims, the G has the ability and its way to obtain it directly through some channels. Each disaster area is allocated with one CEO to carry out relief work. As a Ziji volunteer, I should carry out my missions. Our work is to decorate the venue and have all of the aid supplies and cash cards ready. We had only five days to prepare all of these, which is very short. Although the number of hurricane victims is quite large, Tsuji was still able to fulfill the impossible mission by conducting relief work faster. It was the CEO of Tsuji Global Volunteer, Stephen Huan, who dispatched volunteers to help. Everyone gathered in Houston, including the CEOs and deputy CEOs. Everyone came to help with love and compassion. Each successful relief distribution is fully supported by local government officials. We received help from the mayor and a senior high school. When we decorated the venue yesterday, the mayor and the school principal led their employees to help decorate the venue. The second aid distribution in Dickinson even hits the highest number of the U.S. disaster relief households. Breaking a record, and it's a good record. Uh, we're, it, it, I, I'm, I'm so amazed at the volunteers. I cannot thank the Tucci Foundation enough. From relief distributions, cleanup efforts to home visitations, Tsuji provides all around companionship. Tsuji's love for Hurricane Harvey victims will remain even though it has been a month after the disaster. Also in the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey, Tsuji's relief efforts and the government's plans for rebuilding the disaster areas in Houston has led to preparations for mid- and long-term assistance. Here's more. And I appreciate y'all so much. With this help, it's a big, big help for us. I'm so grateful for you guys. You guys are really helping us out. I think this is awesome what you guys are doing. Thank you. God bless you. Y'all are doing such an awesome job. And thank y'all for being here. Really do.
The things in Suji's helping hands are the power of stability. The next thing that the hurricane victims are to face is to rebuild their homes. It has been a month since Hurricane Harvey tore through Houston on August 25th. I'm right here in Dickinson City, which is in the suburb of Houston. We can see that the streets have almost been cleaned up. But when we take a look at the alley, we can see dead branches piled up here and local residents have dumped their trash on the streets. We're hoping it will take less than three months. Yes, they the trucks come by and we were supposed to get more trucks today, hopefully. Um, it's a, such a slow process. Hurricane victims have to start from scratch, restoring their homes and the city. Some people have quickly found workers to repair their homes and start their first step of restoration. However, most people are not this lucky. Getting contractors and getting supplies and drywall and getting electricians um, is going to be the bottleneck here. One month after the disaster, there's also been a problem with water shortages. They were advising all the residents and the local businesses that um, to restrict water usage, so uh, fewer showers, laundry, washing, um, no flushing of, of the toilets, um, just to conserve the wastes. Residents living in Port Arthur, Jefferson County and Orange County have faced many life challenges, including the quality of drinking water. Local governments appeal the residents will live in other places temporarily, not to return home. As it has been a month after the disaster, city's relief work has come to an end. However, for many hurricane victims, it's still a long way to go to rebuild their homes. I'm not honestly sure what to expect from the government just yet. It's been pretty early. I know that um, FEMA has acted fairly quickly to try and help us. Uh, Many residential houses have been severely damaged by the disaster. So far, 700,000 people have reported to FEMA and registered as hurricane victims. However, only 230,000 some cases have been approved. Thankfully, city volunteers have continued to care for the victims as they keep thinking how to provide further assistance. In the United States, which is a highly developed country, if we want to conduct the midterm assistance, we have to see how the government wants us to help them. Of course, we will spend the money wisely. Wherever there is a disaster, Tsuji will pitch in to provide timely assistance. Even though it has been a month after the disaster, it does not mean Tsuji's relief work has concluded. Instead, it is the beginning of another long journey. Farmers use pesticides to kill pests, though this action doesn't protect beneficial insects, such as bees. For the first time, the Bureau of Animal and Plant Health Inspection and Quarantine permitted the use of insecticide that is similar to nicotine. However, in May of this year, the government changed course. Let's find out the reason for this. This year, lychee-producing areas in central and southern Taiwan were suffering from a pest infestation. Gently peeling back this budding leaf, these green dots are where the stink bug laid its eggs. Oh, here's a little bit, and you have to see whether there is something that can kill stink bugs. If we don't do this, stink bugs won't be removed, then after the flowering of the lychee, it will transfer to the long green bugs. In order to curb pests, agricultural authorities in the hardest hit areas of Kaohsiung and Taichung released a natural enemy of this bug the Anastasis japonicus, which is a small ant that eats the larvae of many bugs. However, limited breeding made their release ineffective. So beginning this year, they announced the release of 20 types of pesticides, which include imidacloprid and neonicotinoids, which have led to the death of local bees. The pesticide is very effective. But one of the difficult problems that we encountered was a beekeeper that didn't manage his hives well and many of his bees became poisoned. This is Pindong's Gaoshu, where the bees have died from the use of pesticides. You can see these dead bees everywhere. Traveling south in March, we found a large number of bees dead, at least half of their past population. <laughs> 
呃，大概六层。With dead bees everywhere, some are still on the ground struggling to survive. With fresh pollen still on their legs, though in a few minutes they will be dead. You want to tell us? Oh, you just pass through. Yeah, he's drug addicted. He may be passing through the zoo, or he's going to get some bees to use. Many believe that the collapse of these bee populations is related to multiple pesticides. Pen, not just every person is pen. Not everyone spreads pesticides. Today, this farmer may do it, and then the next day, that farmer. Bees go from farm to farm, where they may get poisoned. Beekeepers have loudly protested the use of pesticides that include imidacloprid, theomexotham, and neonicotinoids, with many believing their claims are indeed quite reasonable. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency last year, on January 6th, finally admitted that imidacloprid in excess of 25 ppb will cause problems for bees. Neonicotinoids in recent years have drawn international attention, with National Taiwan University confirming for the first time that imidacloprid not only lead bees to lose their way home, but also lead to deterioration of their brains, as long as the concentration is above 1 ppb. Furthermore, there are potential gene mutations which can affect the next generation. Even if the bee larvae looks white and healthy, their immune system, cognitive ability, metabolism, and other systems, such as those regulating cell growth and differentiation, can be severely damaged. Immunity is immune. Of course, immune system is affected, and all five related genes are 100% affected. These are some genes that are abnormal, though we are not sure whether what causes it. One PPB is not much, just like a small pill thrown into a large swimming pool, though it can cause unprecedented ecological damage. Today, the problem with bees are not just confined to them, as we have many solitary bees and stingless bees. Isn't this a problem? The biggest worry is what we can see, which may be a very ridiculous problem. We officially announced that imidacloprid can be used when lygi or flooring, but later we said not to use it during flooring season. In May, the Bureau of Animal and Plant Health Inspection and Quarantine convened a meeting of experts following similar action by the European Union. The three pesticides originally permitted to be used on lychee and longan were temporarily canceled and a two-year observation period was set. However, this decision for bees, although alleviating their plight temporarily, did not solve acute poisoning issues, leading to a more serious residual drug problem. The victim is no longer just bees, but human beings themselves. And tomorrow's report will continue to analyze this issue in greater depth. In our next report, we meet an amazing teacher who has inspired his students despite being disabled. Li Jingshi, who teaches at Dada Commercial and Technical Vocational School, lost both arms in an accident. Despite the tragedy, he's grateful for being alive and study hard to become a teacher. When they see me, they think of a cartoon character. I say that I'm like Captain Hook. Operating the keyboard with his hooks and stepping on the mouse, Li Jingshi, who is a computer teacher, introduces himself to the students, telling them about the accident he experienced when he was 16. The electric current went through my body, and when that happened, it needs an outlet. Therefore, half of my head was shaved off. I lost an ear and damaged my eye. In addition, there was a hole in my buttock. It is a miracle that he lived, and therefore he is grateful despite the amputation of his arms. Although I am disabled, it's wonderful I could drive. According to the law, those without arms cannot obtain driver's license. However, Lee did not give up. In the end, the Ministry of Transportation and Communications made an exception after sending someone to make sure he could drive in a test. That was the regulation of the Ministry of Transportation. I fought for my right, but he said he has never seen people operate the prosthesis like this. Lee has also won an award in International Computer Programming Contest, and he was received by the former president. 
Lee said that he did not perform well in school. After losing his hands, he could not do labor work, so he studied hard. Becoming a teacher was a surprise turnout in life. I told them as long as they study hard in vocational school, in the future they can pick their ideal university. Besides teaching, Lee often delivers speeches, including encouraging inmates in prisons. My mother told me that there is hope for everyone. She told me back then, if the God wants you to become like this, he has a mission for you. A teacher like him can give children the strength to stay strong. So I'm very touched by Mr. Lee, who has given students positive energy. With the nickname Captain Hook, Lee will continue to inspire his students to work hard and pursue their aspirations just like him. According to statistics, among people who are 65 or older, 2 to 8 percent of people suffer from aortic aneurysm. People with high blood pressure, high blood glucose, and high blood lipid are considered high-risk groups. Here's more. Balloons can burst when its pressure is unbearable. However, do you know that aortas in the human body are similar to balloons and can enlarge in the body or even rupture? The aorta is a tube shape. As we age, the inner membrane of the aorta will degenerate, leading to atherosclerosis, or damage of the membrane. After the walls are weakened, the blood vessel is enlarged, causing aortic aneurysm. Aorta is the largest blood vessel in the body with a diameter of 2 centimeters. The aorta distributes oxygenated blood from the heart through the small arteries to different organs. Aging or disease can cause aortic wall related diseases. Once the aortic walls weaken, a rupture can cause blood to spill, leading to a 50% mortality rate. When enlargement of the aorta is greater than 3 centimeters, it is considered an aortic aneurysm. But basically, we only need to treat it when the enlargement is greater than 5.5 centimeters. In such cases, the risk of rupture every year is about 1 in 10. As blood spills all of a sudden, it leads to hemorrhagic shock. Aortic aneurysm usually happens to seniors, and the rate is higher among men. People with high blood pressure, high blood glucose, and high blood lipid and smokers are high risk groups. For people who are 65 or older, there is 2 to 8 percent chance of experiencing an aortic aneurysm. They should undergo CT exams once every year. If the enlargement is about 5 centimeters, they should undergo CT exams once every half a year. Currently, minimally invasive surgeries can relieve aortic aneurysm. Therefore, doctors suggest that people undergo regular health checks to monitor their health conditions and prevent life-threatening conditions. To celebrate Malaysia's Independence Day, teachers of Tsuji Kindergarten in Penang brought their students to the fire department in Penang. We'll leave you with these images at the end of our program. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.